Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Padmavati Tungadutti from Teach Connect. I'm a quality education specialist. I'm on a mission of improving quality of education at schools. Today, I will analyze mathematics standard question paper that is a sample question paper issued by the CBSC. This sample question paper is for grade 10 mathematics standard. I'll share my screen now. This is class 10, 2022-23 mathematics standard sample question paper. Obviously, we all know the information which is given by CBSC that there are MCQ questions, there are two marks questions, three marks questions, and five marks questions, which are given here. There are three case-based integrated units of assessment, and each one is four marks. Now, whenever these instructions are very, very important, take 22 by 7 is equal to 5, wherever required, if not stated. We have to inform this to the children. I feel that whenever we analyze a question paper, we are supposed to note down a few points. As a teacher, it is our responsibility to show the students right from the topic start section A. Show them that this is section A. Therefore, this consists of 20 questions of one mark each. Every question which is given here has one skill, and one content point. There are 20 small points associated with this. That means one question has one skill and one content which the sh child should understand. One question has one skill and one content point. For example, let us take the first question. Let A and B be two positive integers such that a is equal to p cube q power 4 and b is equal to p square q cube, where p and q are prime numbers. Then if HCF is given, LCM is given, then what is the value of m plus n into r plus s? Therefore, the child is supposed to know the solution for this with respect to HCF and LCM. They know that HCF into LCM is equal to product of two numbers which are given here. That is the first point which is asked. And there is a small condition included. That's the skill. That's P is equal to prime. P and Q are prime numbers. If they are not prime, the question gets a deviation from there. Therefore, this limitation must be told to children. Let them solve one question after the other. There is no hurry. Instead of doing everything in a wrong way, it is better to understand each question and solve it. Then what are the other questions which we can frame with this? That is, when the product of two numbers is given and LCM or HCF can be determined or calculated, Therefore, the teacher has to keep this question in front of her and frame two more questions on similar lines with the condition. If the child knows that P and Q are prime numbers and they are not composite numbers, then the depth of understanding will increase. What's the difference between the condition P and Q are prime numbers and why P and Q are prime numbers is an important instruction. Therefore, that is how you have to answer the first question. Question number two. Let P be a prime number. The quadratic equation having its roots as factors of P is. By this time, the students know what's a quadratic equation and what's a prime number. See, the fact that we have understood the prime number in the earlier question is also useful here. This question has a skill over there, understanding what are the factors of a prime number. That is the question basic. This is what the mathematics teacher has to understand. Factors of a prime number are itself and 1. Therefore, P and 1 
its roots are P and one, it is directly mentioned over here. And the rest is framing the quadratic equation. Therefore, the skill is finding the factors of a prime number and the content is having the quadratic equation, having the quadratic equation, solving it and putting it in the form of ax square plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Now look at the third question. If alpha and beta are the zeros of the polynomial, alpha plus beta alpha is equal to alpha beta, then P is what? This question, the student must try to answer this question based on the relationship between the coefficients and the roots. That is what is alpha plus beta, that is, uh, minus b by a and alpha beta is c by a. Therefore, what is the skill included in this? Does the child know that zeros of the polynomial for this, the equation f of x is zero and alpha plus beta, what are the values of alpha plus beta and alpha beta? This is asked in this question. Then obviously p will be, p can be calculated. Therefore, that's how the skill and the content part of these are being divided. The fourth question, if the system of equations, there are two equations given and they both are inconsistent. Therefore, when a system of equations is given and inconsistency has to be checked, what is the condition which has to be applied? Therefore, the skill here is that the child know what is inconsistency here. What are inconsistent equations? Then, does the child know that the coefficients of x are equal? This is what we expect the student to do and solve the question. That's how the teacher has to separate the skill part with the content part. Then, now, there is another set of equations which are consistent equations. When inconsistent equations, there is a question frame. Consistent equations also, we are supposed to frame an equation and allow the children to work on that. That's how we will complete the concept and relate it to the learning outcome or the lesson which we are teaching the student. Now, the fifth question. If the vertices of a parallelogram PQR is taken in order R, then the fourth coordinate or the fourth vertex S is. For the child can solve this parallelogram problem in a different way. But those children who cannot solve it in the regular way that the parallelogram uh, the diagonals are bisected and things like that. The child can as well draw this on a graph sheet and immediately locate the fourth vertex. Therefore, if the child cannot do the problem and for those students who lack the competency of answering this question, the skill is they can draw it on the graph sheet and automatically locate the point. Dear teachers, please do not stick only to answering the question by a formula method. Look for another easier method for the child to answer the question. When the diagram and the coordinates are drawn for a parallelogram in a cyclic order, obviously you will get the coordinates and they can draw this on a rough sheet also. Now the question number six. There are two triangles. ABC is similar to triangle PQR. AM and PN are altitudes respectively. Then there is a relationship between the sides and the altitudes. Basically, the skill is does the child know that how these two similar triangles have to be placed on a white paper, like how, whether when, when A is the apex, P is also an apex. Can the child read the triangle, the alphabets in a similar way and write down 
the three alphabets, angle A, angle B, angle C in an order similar to angle P, angle Q, angle R, this is one skill which is tested over here. And the rest is very, very easy to follow. And if time permits, I always feel that AB square by PQ square is equal to four over nine. How will it be as a teacher, as an enthusiastic teacher, if you can teach the children that AB by PQ is equal to plus or minus two by plus or minus three, that is the arrangement of the triangles on a graph sheet. It's very interesting to teach the children that way. What are all the other possibilities of framing this question? The teacher can look for various possibilities in similar triangles and uh, try to frame questions. Question number seven, yes, here. X tan 60, cos 60, sin 60, cot 60 degrees. Then X is how much? Here, the values are tested. The value does a child know, the values of sin 60, cos 60, etc. Teach a child either by a formula method of cos 60, sin 60, or writing the values. Do not assume that only one method of solving the problem will hit everybody. Every child will have a different visualization skill. Therefore, the child will be able to understand in a different way. Therefore, children will look for a different answer from the teacher when they identify more than one method of doing it. If you solve this sample question paper with the student, Every question and the possible questions around the same question, then obviously the child will develop confidence first. After that, grades come. Now, sine theta plus cos theta is equal to root 2, then tan theta plus cot theta is equal to how much? There is a small twist over here that it, root 2 can be written as 2 by root 2. Now, how did I get that idea that 2 by root 2 has to be written over here? As I've told you, one skill and one content. Now, just thinking for a while, the clue is available in the question. Where does sine theta touch with a root 2? What's, is there any relationship between root 2 and sine theta? Yes, sine 45 degrees is equal to 1 by root 2. Here, based on this, if you can solve this problem. Let the child think. When a number is given, what is the relationship between this number and the problem? Obviously, you can do this problem. That means, once again, the values are tested here in question number 7 and question number 8. And the child will be able to solve the problem tan theta plus cot theta, whether the child can draw the right angle triangle and mark the angles and the values, this is what is tested over here. The objective type questions have a lot of content in them. Provided they answer the skill and hit on the skill, if they hit on the skill, they will be able to answer the content. In question number eight, what are the other values which can be given over here? Or can they use algebraic identities over here? Try and brainstorm and allow the children to frame the equation. Question number nine. Here, this is a BPT, what we call basic proportionality theorem. Whether it is for one mark or two marks or three marks, the principle doesn't differ here. If it is a one mark question, the basis will be asked. If it is a two mark question, the one mark has to be, however, answered, and the top two marks, one more mark has to be added over there. For in this basic proportionality theorem, children will definitely be able to do because this is a straight question. Here, this is a trapezium question number 10. AD is parallel to BC. Here the skill is, is the child able to draw AD parallel to BC? Are A, B, C, D 
written in a cyclic order or not a b c d then only you will have a d and b c as parallel line that is the condition given after all maths is always about condition then a o by o c is equal to d o by o b is equal to 1 by 2 is the child able to look for similar triangles in this trapezium when it is given that AO by OC is equal to DO by OB, there is any other condition given over there. Then obviously it becomes an oral question now because it is 4 centimeters. The other side should be 8 centimeters for the trapezium. The other parallel side will be 8 centimeters. When does this answer become very easy? When the child is able to identify that there are two similar triangles, one with one proportion and two, the second one with the second proportion. One is the double of the other. Now, what are the other questions we can frame? Can we ask them the ratio when both the sides are given? Yes, that's another familiar question which would be given. And therefore, look for more than one question in the same question. Twist it. The answer becomes the question part of it and the question becomes the answer part of it. Frame the question. Take the help of children. Let them come out with a few more questions. Question number 11. Two tangents are inclined at a 60 degree angle for a circle of radius 3 centimeters. Yes. There is radius given here. There is a tangent given here. Obviously, the child will know that the radius is perpendicular to the tangent. This is a normal skill. But now, what if the child cannot do this problem this way and if she forgets that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius? The key words given here are radius and tangent. Then what happens? The child can actually draw the diagram and find the answer. It is so easy. If the child can draw the diagram, it doesn't take much time. It takes only 30 seconds to draw the diagram. It is worth getting a mark over here rather than leaving the question because the child is not familiar with the problem. Question number 12. The area of the circle that is inscribed in a square, inscribed becomes the keyword. Is it circumscribed or inscribed? These two are different problems. If it is inscribed, it becomes one problem which we are seeing here. If it is circumscribed, that becomes another problem. And is a square circumscribed or is a circle circumscribed? It is very easy to find out because the answer has to be left in pi. That means if the child has to multiply the answer with 22 by 7, we are testing on the numerical skills. Here it is not tested. It is not required to know whether the child is able to multiply a number with 22 by 7. Not required. That's not what the examiner wants. They want the child to understand whether the circle is in between and the square is outside or whether the square is inside and the circle is outside. This is a very beautiful question. This is what the ex what would be the expectation this would be the expectation of CBSE as per national education policy. Look at the 13th question. It is so beautifully crafted I should say. The question paper is not written. It is crafted. The length, breadth and height of a cuboid are given. And the length of the diagonal is given. This is in involving a spatial skill. Because the diagonal of a cuboid is written differently and it should be imagined by the child. It is better if the teacher shows a cuboid and the diagonal and bring the children to the math lab. Then the sum becomes very easy when they're asking for a total surface area. Then the other two problems would be lateral surface area and the volume. Obvious problem. Now, when it is question number 14, if it is the median, mode, and mean. When it is written that it is median, mode, and mean, there is a 
skill involved here to write the formula and solve it for those equations. Therefore, whenever you frame a question, it has to be, it should be having a skill and it should also have a content. Question number 15 is a spatial visualization that there is a circular wheel rolling. No, it did not roll one or two revolutions. It has gone all the way to 11 kilometers. Then when it has gone to 11 kilometers, that means we are not interested in all the 11 kilometers. They're only interested in how many revolutions did the circle make? Therefore, the circle is making a revolution. We are talking about the circumference of the circle. Now, the obviously next question would be area of the circle if you have to frame something. Therefore, we try and understand this sample paper along with other sample paper which we can prepare for the mock exam based on this. Question number 16. Yes, it is asking you the median and the mode. The knowledge, this is a very straight question, whether we know whether it is median and modal class. Are we able to identify and rearrange the numbers mentally? And question number 17, dice roll, probability. Never you have a difficult question in a probability. Question number 18, yes, tan beta is equal to 4 by 5. Whenever such an angle is given, the child should write down the tan beta is equal to 4 by 5. Frame a triangle, write down sine theta, sine beta over here. And finish off this problem. Is the child able to formulate sine theta and cos theta for this? This is what is required. Then after this, it is once again, when I have observed, the product is a, of two numbers is 5780. HCF is 17 and LCM is 340. Did we not go through this question in question number one where we have understood that HCF into LCM will be the product of two numbers. It's an interesting thing. If the teacher explains one problem after the other, it doesn't even take much time for the teacher to complete and hit on the skill for the student. The rest is if everything is okay, they can mark options A, B, or C, or D. Therefore, the principal also has to work with the teacher trying and understand. Next question number 20 is if the coordinates of the midpoints of the sides AB and AC of triangle ABC are respectively 3, 5 and minus 3, minus 3, then BC is equal to 20 units. Let the child draw this on the graph paper. Because during the practice session, if the child can draw on the graph paper, it is easy for the child to see that the coordinates are marked on the graph paper. The midpoints are given. So beautifully, the children can complete the triangle because when a midpoint is given, they know where the coordinates lie then they can easily answer this question. Now going to section B, yes, it should be formulated and drawn. Again, it is a skill and a content question. When we see this skill includes observation skill. When the coefficient of A of one equation is equal to the coefficient of B of another equation, fantastic, we can add and subtract and solve numerically. When we observe that coefficient of x in the first equation is equal to the coefficient of y in the second equation, then easily the child can solve this problem. This problem number 22 is another basic proportionality theorem. That is, I request you all to go through the first 20 questions again and again because only those concepts are asked in the examination. And this is again a basic proportionality theorem with the base as C and D. How does the child have a spatial knowledge? 
very important to identify that triangles B, A, E and C, A, D are similar. If they can have spatial knowledge of the question earlier, obviously they can do this. Then here in this question, again we see tangents, again we see radii, as I've told you earlier in my video for analysis of sample question paper science. First, allow the child to understand the problem. There are two tangents meeting at one particular point. There are two radii over here. There is one point on the radius that is Q. A, B, Q are points on the circumference. Then the angle at O, what's the relationship between the angle at O and angle at Q? What's the relationship between angle P and angle O? All these, if the child is able to understand of the questions are going to appear only from this diagram, not here, but anywhere else also during the final examination also. Therefore, looking at the diagram, understanding that PA is equal to PB, understanding that OA and OB are at 90 degrees to the tangent, that brings the beauty for this question. I am really liking it as I move on to the question paper from one question number to 23 question number because these are all the repetition of skills until question number 20. The same skills are asked again and again. Then now we have the length of the minute hand of a clock is 6 centimeters. Find the area swept by it when it moves from 7.05 p.m. to 7.40 p.m. The teacher must have told that the area swept by a particular needle is going to be in a sector form. This is a clock. The skill involved is visualizing the clock with angles in it. The total is 360 degrees. All these have to come to the mind of a student. These are the only concepts left. All the questions will be asked from these concepts only. Now. Therefore, when it is 35 minutes of time, then if 360 degrees is the total circle from the center, if the clock has, if the needle of the clock has to move from 12 to number 12, again, it turns 360 degrees. Then obviously that should, what is it for 35 minutes? That is going to be 60 minutes, 60 minutes. That is the angle and this is 35 minutes and watch the angle which is which the hand sweeps. Length of a minute hand sweeps. That's how you calculate the whole of a sector. You don't have to memorize the problem. Do not allow child to memorize the problem. Just calculate for 360 degrees. This is the area for this time particular thing. Watch the area. Now the next one here, oh, this is a very beautiful question which is crafted. The radius, there are four vertices of this quadrilateral. And the skill here is, does the child know that sum of all the angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees? This is what is asked over here. Then, if the child knows, obviously, all the four sectors will become one circle. It is so easy to calculate that. Did the child visualize that sum of all the angles here is equal to 360 degrees? Does the child know that sum of all the angles in a parallelogram is equal to 360 degrees? This is what we are asking the student. I really like this question because the child has to rejoin all the parts of the shaded regions into one big circle. That's really very nice to see this question. And this is question number 25. Sine of A plus B is equal to 1. What is the link between the sine of an angle and the number? If the child is able to know the link between the sign of angle and a number, then obviously the child can do it. Right? Then you have 
A plus B is lying between 0 and 90. This is the syllabus for the children. They do not have angles beyond 90 degrees. That is another intermediate 11 and 12 class question. Then angle A is greater than angle B because A minus B should be a positive value. Otherwise, things go in a different way. Therefore, these limitations are that do not make this question a complicated one, but at the same time, let the children understand the question properly because if we don't lay a base at grade 10, grade 11 and grade 12 become very difficult for the children. Now, this what else can we have? If it is not one, then we can have 60 degrees and 30 degrees. It can have 45 and 45 degrees. And find out the values of A and B. Find an acute angle theta. It's always specifically mentioned that angle theta is less than 90 degrees. Just a census of value. When does root 3 come into picture? When it is sine theta and cos theta. Children have to know that and try to solve this problem. Instead of blindly solving the problem, let them try and understand the relationship between root 3 and the angle. That's a much easier way to solve the question. Then, section C. Question number 26. Given that root 3 is irrational, prove that 5 plus 2 root 3 is irrational. Now, this question is a very obvious one because this test, the skill of the students, if they know what is a rational number or irrational number and the proof associated with this, and this is the basic question, students must have already done this many a number of times. Each time, whenever a child tries to solve these questions of two marks and three marks, let the teacher know what is the key step. Please train the children as per the marking scheme. What are the steps which are required? What steps carry marks? And what steps do not carry marks? Underlining the answer and mentioning it that it is an answer over there also carries marks. When we go to question number 27, as, we, as I've already told you, the zeros of the polynomial have already been asked. Relationship between the roots is already asked in the earlier question. Now here, there is a one step above question. That is zeros of the polynomial. To another question, this zeros are double. I'm finding the values of P and Q. There are only a few skills which are tested here. Questions 1 to 20. These are all the repeat skills. Then 28, question number 28. A train which is traveling with uniform speed. It reaches a particular time and the journey number of hours. Now, why is it a train here? The teacher has to demonstrate this in the math lab. If it's a train, it has to leave the platform completely. If it's a car, it has a negligible width and a negligible length. When compared to a train, train is a little long. Therefore, the last bogey has to move out of the train or out of the platform. Establish a relationship between the uniform speed, scheduled time, whether it is going on a higher speed or lower speed, and the child is supposed to solve the simultaneous equation. That is, framing the set of equations and solving them with comprehension skill that is required over here. Or there is an entrepreneur skill question, this or skill, selling a particular number of chocolates at a particular lot, then the number of chocolates at a different price, then testing whether the child can sell these lots at a different prices or not, what's the money they have, how many chocolates do we have, or calculating how much money. This is an entrepreneur skill question. Let them draw chocolates there. 
let them write down the value. That's how they can do grouping and answer this question. That is two rupees for three chocolates. Every three chocolates is two rupees. They further their imagination will run ahead and they can solve this question. 29th question, prove the following. Tan cube theta plus cot cube theta. Whenever there is a cubic question, cot cube theta plus tan cube theta, the child should be able to write down the A cube plus B cube formula. The skill behind is writing A cube plus B cube formula. Then obviously the relationship between cot and tan, secant, cosecant, sine and cos, is easy over here. Whenever they are able to solve the right hand side, right hand side must be solved and brought to the left hand side. Please do not teach the children to solve the right hand side and the left hand side are match. Mathematically, that might be correct, but skill wise, that is wrong. Question number 30 parallelogram that has a sub circumscribing a circle, as I have mentioned to you. The skills are already covered in the first 20 questions. Again, there it was inscribing and here it is circumscribing. Parallelogram, circumscribing in a circle is a rhombus. There you have finished with a circle and a square over there. Yes, once again getting on to this question. It's a much, much comparable question. So this 31 is comparable to 23. That means if one concept is taught very clearly, here the child will be able to do this question number 31 very easily. There is a tangent, a tangent, the radius is perpendicular, two tangents are parallel. There is a tangent once again, here you have uh, point C touching the circumference, point Q touching the circumference, point P touching the circumference. These are the three tangents drawn. The lengths are BC and QB are equal. All these things, let the child go uh, around this question. And there can be many questions break. And coins, tossing, pack of cards, they're all very easy questions. They can be done within no time because probability, the very basic, the ABCs of probability is given here. If it is not coins, it would be a dice. Section number D. D consists of four questions of five marks each. Question number 32. This is regarding volumes. Pipe of larger diameter is used and the water fills into the swimming pool. Individually, the pipes fill and the children will have a fair idea as to how the swimming pool is filled and more than one pipe is required to fill a swimming pool. This is just a general knowledge for the children. It's a common knowledge. Then, how they solve this problem? Looking at this, comprehension skills. Framing the equations and then solving it. Again, for five marks, show the children where there is a step and how the marks are allocated to them. In a flight of about 600 kilometers, aircraft was slowed down due to bad weather. They should know, the children should know that aircraft do slow down and therefore the time of flight will increase. When there is a bad weather and finding the schedule duration of flight, it is important for them to check in future by God's grace if they are able to fly. By any chance, if they have to fly, then they also have to take this bad weather conditions into picture. And they should know that the average speed for the trip was reduced by 200 kilometers per hour. If we cannot visualize that the speed of the flight will be much, much higher and it is reduced by 200 kilometers. The children cannot appreciate the problem. Visualizing it, they want to draw how the flight is going. Let them draw. Let them first enjoy. Problem solving comes later. 
Then question number 33. If a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle intersecting the other two sides in distinct points, Yes, again, this is a basic proportionality theorem because we are dividing the triangle drawn parallel to one side where there are two points which are given. Other two sides are divided in the same ratio. Using the above theorem, prove that a line through the point of intersection and of the diagonals parallel to the base of the trapezium divides the non-parallel sides in the same ratio. This is a visualization question. The comprehension child has to do one step after the other. And question number 34, due to heavy floods in a state, thousands were rendered homeless. 50 schools collectively decided to provide place and canvas for 1,500 tents and share the whole expenditure equally. Children will appreciate this because they should know that they got to pitch in some money for those who are homeless. This teaches them a consideration skill. How the tent is pitched in, how the tent is laid, and how it can be made, and how the upper part is conical, the teacher has to show this with a paper or a cloth. Then let it take time. Even now it is not too late. Then it has to go through the question one by one. The child will understand how it forms a cylindrical base, how there is a conical part on top of it. Then the child can easily do this problem. The comprehension skill has to be addressed too. Yes, there are two identical solid cubical boxes. There are two solid cubical boxes which from the top face of the first cube, a hemisphere of diameter equal to the side of the scoop. Hemisphere is scooped up. That means there is a hemisphere inside a cube. Therefore, then the hem this hemisphere is inverted and placed on top like a dome. How to find the new volume? The material is inside. This belongs to designing question. The children will understand that from one product with the material available, they can design another product. The ratio of the total surface area, what is the surface area will change and how they can design another object from the available material. And where are the marks allocated for these steps? It's important. The skill part of it, where I'm doing this analysis, the skill is more important for the children, for their future. The grades are important. Yes, they do get good grades. But how do they get good grades? One step after the other, if they are able to visualize every problem, they will get a good grade. This is how the median of the following data is given. Then... How are they going to calculate if the total frequency is equal to 100? Then how this 100 data is being distributed? Because this is the basis for data analysis. Where is it that there is maximum number? Though it is not ours, it's, everything will not be asked in the examination. The sample paper itself is a booklet on its own. Therefore, how the median can be assessed and how the frequency matters. Why is it that at some places there is no value or low value? And why is it at some places that it has high value? What does it mean? Having a high value means what? Like take some examples and tell the children. And now we go on to the section E. Case study based question. Children should find this interesting. It is not that they just look for information and the mathematics. Mathematics is their lifelong. Therefore, a tiling or tessellation of flat surface and the covering of plane using one or more geometric shapes called tiles with no overlaps or no gaps. Make the children go around the school, find the patterns in the flooring. Let them understand that flooring is also a tessellation because tessellation doesn't mean a uniform pattern. Ununiform tessellations also will be there. 
and show them some pictures of Rome and Islamic art, then they will know that the Romanian art is different and Islamic art is different. And why we call it Islamic art? What are the features of Islamic art? The paintings shown below, the archaeological museum of Seville. How it is? Go to it. Go to let the children browse this museum, this archaeological museum. How is it made about square trick? triangles and hexagons. This is the beginning for the children to have an independent learning later on. Look here, it is something like this. Not always we lay the tiles in proper squares or rectangles. See, this is how they can get to calculate the problem. Show them the geometrical figures. Oh, show them the hexagons, the squares, the triangles and the then the children will be able to do the problem. More so, it is there on the graph sheet to make it very easy. See, it is so easy for the children to calculate on a graph sheet. For this, the teacher doesn't need to do any extra effort. Show them. That's the skill. The teacher can show the children to observe what's happening in the problem. The job is done, obviously, for them. What is the area of the trapezium A, F, G, H? There is a trapezium over here. In this trapezium, how to calculate the area? Yeah, you can all do it on graph sheet also. And the school auditorium. See how the question is brought back to local context. The children must have seen an auditorium sometime during their 12 years of life, though you must not be having one, but a small auditorium at least, a small assembly place at least they must have visited. Therefore, how this arrangement is made and how they are going to extend this arrangement, they know that there are 30 seats in the first row and each and Next row has 10 seats. Do not expect the children to do miracles in the examination. First, see, uh, first row, there are 30 seats. Next row, there will be 40. Another row, there will be 50. Let them do it manually. It is not written that the children have to use a, a arithmetic progression. It is not mentioned anywhere. No formula is mentioned. Use formula to do this question. That phrase is not mentioned. Then why use formula? Do it without a formula. That will be very good for the children to understand one after the other. 30, 40 seats. After 30 comes 40, the second row. 50, the third row. 60, the fourth row. Why should they use a formula? For 1500 seats, let them add. Let them add and do. How many rows need to be there? Or if 1,500 seats are to be arranged, mind you, the teacher has to show the difference between internal choice questions and the external choice question. And if there are 17 rows, now what's happening? Let them do everything on the piece of paper. And question number 38, airplanes are flying again. Air traffic control. The children will know that just as there is road traffic control, there is air traffic control over there. And non-controlled airspace. Wow, that's a beautiful word for them. It doesn't mean that every part of the sky is controlled. It, there is a non-controlled airspace also available. Therefore, here we can see who direct aircraft on the ground and through a given section of controlled airspace can provide advisory services to aircraft in non-controlled airspace. Talk to them about controlled airspace, non-controlled airspace. Don't tell that there is no time. Children, if they have an interest in them, they will try to read the whole case study. And that will be a skill for them to extend it to the examination. Also, they will try to visualize everything. If you show them something, let us not be in the mold of answering question by question. Come out of that mold and try answering the question as a skill. If they understand, visualize everything, there are new connections being formed for this. 
now here you see now the question remains the same this is the textbook question how they see 3000 root 3 again what's the relationship between root 3 and sin theta and cos theta and tan theta is there anywhere where there is root 3 connected there is therefore how they are able to now draw the diagram how much time will it how much distance will it travel within 30 seconds how can the plane from one point to another move? What is the speed of the plane? All this become a child's play when the teacher is decoding the case study, asking them information. And then you see, now examination conditions, examination conditions is not a great condition. It's a normal condition where the child has to think on his or her own. But did we teach them to think on their own? Think the children must be taught to think on their own. That's really a good thing for them. Thank you so much. I did my best in analyzing this uh, answer paper. When I've seen a few other videos of sample question paper analysis, question paper was solved. Solved question paper is available anywhere. But... The analysis of the question paper means how to transact the knowledge to the children. That's very important. Thanks for being with me all the while. Thank you so much. Be a part of this mission. Try sharing this video with at least one mathematics teacher and there will be a great benefit for about 100 students in another school.